friends welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video you guys I am so excited I have some more Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs for you so if that's something you're interested in definitely stick around click that red subscribe button tap the bell and all that way you're notified every single time I upload also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and with all that being said let's jump into today's DIY Okay friends, so to start off, I take three of these nesting boxes that look like books from Dollar Tree and I had them all nested together so I just pull them apart and then I kind of arrange them how I think I'm going to want them. I then take some hot glue and I just go ahead and glue the lids shut. Next, I give them all a really good coat, or I shouldn't say all of them. I should say I give two of them a good coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and then another one of them. I had to create my own color, so I was going for like this, I don't even know what kind of color you want to call it, but I was looking or going for, I should say, kind of like a maroon color with like a pink tone. I don't know if you guys have seen this color. I see it all the time um, around Halloween in decorations and stuff like that. So that's kind of the color that I was going for. So I just took some Waverly paint. I don't know the exact names that I use because they're not colors that I use um, often. I know one of them is crimson. And then the other one might be Merlot, but don't quote me on that. And I just mix them together to create the color that I got. Next, I just lay them out and I take my transfer from Chalk Couture and it is the Ghost Goblins and Ghouls transfer. I cut that up and then on the first little nesting box, I transfer on the word ghosts. For the middle one, I transfer on the word goblins. And then for the last one, I transfer on the word ghouls. Just ghouls. I did not put the and. But I did just want to leave this part in. Because do you see how my transfer pulled up that paint? Because these nesting boxes are really like a flat, I don't know what kind of material you want to call it. But because I painted on it and then we use something sticky... Um, I didn't fuzz that one enough, which is why it pulled that paint up. So that is why I always tell you guys to fuzz, fuzz, fuzz until you think you fuzzed enough and then fuzz a little bit more. Now for the ghouls, I did mean to transfer that on the other way because of my OCD when I was looking at it, I felt like if I had put the ghouls the other way, you wouldn't really know which side to read from. So, um, because my mind works kind of like when I'm looking at something, I like to have it look the same on the left and the right, if that makes sense. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that, yes, I did mean to transfer that goals word on the other way. I then glued them together, starting with the smallest box first and then the bigger box in the middle and then the medium box on the right hand side. Once I had them glued together, then you can see here that I tried to hand draw lines kind of like on a book, but it was all wonky and it looked really bad. So I did go in with some more paint and just covered those up. And then once the paint dried, then I wasn't too sure what I was gonna do for that part. And then I uh, realized that I had these puffy stickers. So I take these puffy stickers and I give them a coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I then arrange them on my book stacks the way that I like them. And it took me a little bit to kind of arrange these stickers the way that I wanted them because they did not fit on there the way that I wanted them to or had in my mind that they would fit on there or I should say the way that I had it in my mind they did not fit on there correctly so 
For the middle book, I used these puffy stickers um, that you're going to see here in a minute. And then for the book on the right, I took some of the puffy stickers and cut them up to fit. And then for the left, I also cut those up to fit. But I'm just going to let this play. That way you guys can see exactly what I did. Next, I go in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint, and I just focus on the edges, but also I dry brush all the way around this entire project just to make this look old and spooky and weathered. That's the look that I was going for. Now to decorate this, I took three of these skulls that come in a bag of, I believe there's like 10 in here. I don't know exactly, so don't quote me, but... I do take these skulls that come in a bag from Dollar Tree and I start by cutting three of them in half. Next, I take these little white glittery bones from Dollar Tree as well and I cut six of them in half. I then take some hot glue into the inner edge of these skulls and I glue those down to the left side back of the book on the one that says ghosts and I do glue them down one on top of each other. Next I take the little bones and I glue them down to make these skulls look like skull and bones. Last but not least, I take some of these skeleton garlands from Dollar Tree. I take them off of the garland and I just kind of arrange them on top of the book stack the way that I like them. So for one of them, I put him on the main book and just kind of had his leg like draping over. And then for the second one, I popped his head off. I cut off the part where the head was attached to the plastic. And then I glued him down to the right hand book with his legs crossed and then I glued his head right down next to him. I then took some more of those skulls that we originally used to um, decorate the side of the ghost book and I just kind of arranged those skulls all the way around just to give this some dimension and finish out the look. Now I used hot glue for all of this, but I do recommend to use a stronger holding glue like E6000 or Gorilla Glue just to make sure that your book stack stays together nicely and will last a really long time. But all in all, you guys, this did not take me long to put together at all. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. You can let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, but I love it so much. I'm going to be honest, you guys, Halloween decor is not not my specialty but after making it a couple times this year I am in love with Halloween decor so much and I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you guys think so if you're new here my name's Melissa I am so grateful and happy to have you 
If you're not new, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so grateful that you're here. So each week on my channel, I thought that it would be really fun to show you guys my earrings of the week. So for this week, I thought that it was only right that I would bring you guys some Halloween earrings. So check out these little skeletons, you guys. They're so, so cute. I love them so much. They're very lightweight. Can you guess where they're from? Yes, Walmart. I, I believe they were like three or four dollars. So very inexpensive, but so fun and festive. So if you wanna get yourself a pair, I'll show you guys the little display that I found them on, um, and I'll insert that here. And then if you want to get your own pair, head over to Walmart, and I'm sure that your Walmart may have them. If you would like to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week, definitely check the description box below where you will find my PO box. And with all that being said, thank you all so much for supporting every single thing that I do and sending me little goodies to my PO box. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And let's jump back into today's DIYs. Moving on to DIY number two, you guys, this one is so super easy. It literally took five minutes to put together. So I start off with one of these clear jars from Dollar Tree and a strand of lights that I got from Amazon. You guys, the, these battery packs are so small and I believe I got like 12 of these fairy lights for like eight bucks, but I will leave them in my Amazon store in the description box below, but I just take the lid and paint it with my ink waverly chalk paint and then i dry brush it with my white waverly chalk paint i also forgot to mention that i did stick the fairy lights in there and then i put the skulls that we just used in the previous project i believe i used a bag and like three extra skulls so i would definitely pick up two bags for this just to make sure that it's nice and filled and then I put the lid on and I glued the battery pack to the back. I believe my camera died during that little part and I didn't realize it till afterwards. So I did just want to mention that. But I then just take those little skeletons from the skeleton garland. Once again, I pop his head off and cut that little extra part off. And then I glue the skeleton down with his hands right in front of him. And then I glue the skull down kind of like the skeleton was holding its own head and then I take those little white bones once again and I glue two of each on either side of the skeleton yeah the skeleton <laughs> the skeleton you guys um one on top of the other kind of like on an angle if that makes sense but you can see what i did here and then last but not least i take these little spiders these ring spiders from the pack of the white spider webbing and i just clip off the ring part and then i glue those down to the jar as well and then literally you guys look how amazing this turned out i feel like it looks so spooky and so scary but yet it was so easy to make and i know that you can make it too so let me know in the comments down below which projects from today's video you guys will be making yourselves Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Alicia and Leslie, for the craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out in my next video, check the link in the description box below. And just know that whatever way you support me, I appreciate every single one of you so, so much. Okay, friends, moving on to DIY number three. You guys, this one was another super, super easy one. So let's jump right into it. I start off by taking three of these black chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree and I take the tags off. I then lay them side by side and glue them together with some hot glue and some large popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. Now I wanted to show you, I had a few different transfers I was trying to decide. That trick or treat one is so cool, but I ultimately decided on this happy haunting to all and to all a good fright. I just felt that it went with the rest of the decor that I made better, but I wanted to show you guys how to use these big transfers from Chalk Couture. And just so you know, all of the items from Chalk Couture that I used in today's video will be in my link tree in the description box below. You'll see all links are now here in one place. That way, all of my links, whatever you guys need, you can find them all in one spot. So anyway, the easiest way to do this is to peel the backer sheet away from the transfer, and then you're going to fuzz it with the sticky side up. So instead of um, putting your transfer onto the fuzzing cloth, with the bigger transfers, you're going to put your fuzzing cloth onto the transfers. Now, because I have my little helper here, you guys, she's so sweet. I miss her so much every day while she's in school. So we were doing this on a Saturday and she wanted to help me. And of course I allowed her to, because honestly, she is a chalking pro. You guys, if a five-year-old can do it, I know for a fact that you can do it as well. But I just feel like this is such a good time to spend with her and just doing something together even though I'm working she's right there with me so anyway because I didn't want her to get that yellow into the banner part I did just block that off with some placement tape and then when I was pulling this transfer back you guys oh and I should have said that for the moon I did or I should say Sophia did that in bumblebee color and then for the rest of it obviously I used my white chalk paste but when I was peeling this off I kind of let it go back a little bit and it kind of smeared so I did just want to show you how easy it is to just clean this up with a little bit of water and some q-tips so that's what I did. I cleaned it up and then to finish this project off, I felt that it was missing a little something at the top. So I just took a bead of hot glue in the back with some hot, yeah, with some hot glue. I took some hot glue with some hot glue. <laughs> I took some hot glue and some jute and I glued that down to the back and then wrapped it around a bunch of times at the top until I had it to my liking. And then to finish it off, I cut it glued it down and then that was it for this you guys that is why i love chalk couture so much i know i get a lot of flack in the comments about it but you guys i just don't have time to use the other technique chalk couture saves me so much time and energy and i grab for it every single time because it's literally that amazing i don't push chalk couture because i sell it you guys i love it so much and i just want to share it with the world so anyway I did want to mention a huge giveaway with you guys. It is a huge box of goodies from the Dollar Tree and other places. It is a $50 value and it is super duper easy to enter. It ends September 26th at 11.59 p.m. All you have to do to enter is like this video, comment your pl favorite place to visit, mine is my grandmother's, share it with somebody who you think would enjoy it, and for a bonus entry, go to the link in the description box below, join my VIP group on Facebook for an extra entry.
Okay, friends, we are in the home stretch now. And of course, I had to make a Halloween truck. So I start off by taking two of these trucks that I got around Easter time. You can use any of the wooden trucks that you see at Dollar Tree. Any of them will work just fine. But I start off by cutting off the little eggs in back of the truck. I then, and I should have mentioned that I did this to two of them, like I said, and then I take this crate from Dollar Tree, I put a couple beads of hot glue and then glue it to the bed of the truck. Next, I glue the other side and you wanna make sure that you have this standing up. Now, I have made this truck plenty of times and the best way to do it is what I just did you just put your hot glue down and then you kind of stand it up and then put the other piece onto it to make sure that it's going to stand up perfectly. Next, I take a piece of scrapbook paper and I just paint it with some, I believe this is sterling silver from Walmart. Once that's dried, then I put it up to the windows of my truck and I just kind of mark like how big I need it and then I cut cut it down to size for both sides of my truck and then I secure that down with some hot glue. To build the frame of this truck to help it take shape, what you're gonna do is take large popsicle sticks now you can use smaller popsicle sticks however just keep in mind that you're going to have to use more so i take my large popsicle stick i cut the edge off and then i lay it up to my truck mark it where it needs to be cut and then i usually cut it a little bit longer because i'd rather take more off than waste a piece of it so for the first part you're going to use a whole the whole width of the popsicle stick for the second piece you're going to want to lay it out and then mark it because it would be a little bit too tall and then i just use my scissors to cut it down to size and i do secure those down with some hot glue now i'm just going to let the music play because i want you guys to see exactly how i do this instead of cutting a bunch of pieces at once i did cut a good bit but you want to lay your popsicle sticks down onto the piece before you glue it down and then a lot of the pieces you're going to have to cut because of the way that the front of this truck is curved the width of the popsicle stick is a little bit too big in some areas so i just kind of lay it out i mark it if it's too long cut it down glue it and then move on to the next part Now for this part, I laid my popsicle stick down and then I just let it, like I didn't cut it off or anything. And then the second piece for the hood of the truck, I kind of layered that. So I put the first piece down with some hot glue and then the second piece for the hood, I laid that one flat. So it cut, the first one went on an angle and then the second one went flat. I hope that makes sense, but I did just want to mention that it is okay to layer your popsicle sticks almost like an accordion. As many of you know, when you work with hot glue, a lot of times it will bubble up in spots and it, it just doesn't look right. So all I did was take my sander and I just kind of sanded down all of those edges smooth. 
Now to reinforce this, I flip my truck over and I just run a bead of hot glue onto the inside edge where my popsicle sticks met the other trucks. I then take some small popsicle sticks and I just cut a V at the top of them and then I cut them in half. Next, I go in with my hot glue and I glue those down to the back of the truck. And this is, go this is going to be the part of the truck where it, it would be like the wooden part and it would hold everything into the bed of the truck. Now, because this is a Halloween truck, I did want it to look spooky and kind of like some old wooden stakes or something. I don't really know, but I thought that it looked spooky and fun and that is why I did it. So once I had them all glued down to the back of the truck, then I go in with a skewer. I lay it down, cut it down to size, and then I just basically connect all of those small popsicle sticks. I then go in with my ink Waverly chalk paint and I give my entire truck a nice good coat. I also painted the entire underside of my truck in my ink Waverly chalk paint because I didn't want you to be able to see that natural wood shining through when it was standing up. All Hallows Eve transfer, I cut out the one that I wanted and then I transfer on the one that says rest your bones to the front of the truck. Next, I take my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all the way around the truck, focusing on all the little details like the bed of the truck and just the cutout parts of the details, if that makes sense. I just wanted you to be able to see all those details and um, notice them a little bit more. I then take the rest of that paper that I had painted with the silver and I lay it out on the windshield of the truck and I cut that down to size and then I secure it down with some hot glue. Now I felt the window was missing a little something so I do just take a sharpie and draw a few little spider webs and on the windshield of the truck I ended up drawing like a uh, windshield wiper but I didn't like it, so then I went over it with the silver paint again, and I thought that it was covered, but when I took the pictures, I quickly realized that you could still see it. So I did wanna mention that if you do see that part, that's why, um, like I said, I thought that I had it covered, but apparently not. So it doesn't look bad or anything, but I just wanted to mention that in case any of you were wondering. But once I did that part, then I go in with that silver paint and I draw on the headlights as well as the grill. Now I wish I would have used something different just because my hands shake so, so bad. I don't know what it is. I don't drink like a ton of coffee. I mean, I do drink a good bit of coffee, but who knows you guys, long story short, I do shake a lot. So I wish that I had did something a little bit different, but it is what it is, <laughs> my famous line, but I take a popsicle stick, I cut it down and I paint it with that silver. I then took another mini transfer and it had this cute little bat on it. So I transferred that on with my shimmer black chalk paste and then I just cut the edges on a curve for a little license plate in the front. Next, I sand down the edges to make sure they're smooth. And then once again, I secure that down to the front with some hot glue. Next, I take another strand of those lights. You guys, it's a really good deal, so check those out. Um, but I put those in the bottom of the crate in my truck. And then I take some Spanish moss on top of the lights and I arrange some of those skulls. And then as I add things, I add more lights and then I add more things and more lights 
because I didn't want you to be able to see the lights but I did want it to be lit up and then I go in with more of those garland skeletons and I just add them all around so once again I'm just gonna let this play so you guys can see how I decorated this but the rest of this is really just personal preference you guys it's just decorating it come oh my goodness per usual I can't talk uh, it's just completing the look so you're just kind of embellishing it and making it yours so I like to say that this part is totally optional and it's totally up to you so you can add as much or as little as you personally like but you guys I love the way that this truck turned out I think he is so cute and I cannot wait to display this for years to come so if you guys have made it this far in the video leave a skull in the comments down below if you guys cannot find a skull, the word skull will do, or just saying, hey, I'm still here, lets me know that you guys enjoy my content and that I should put more out like this. But you guys, I think we only have one more video for fall, and then we are jumping right into Christmas. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you guys are ready to see Christmas DIYs or hold off a little bit. I'm always curious to know what you guys think. So with all that being said, also one more thing to let me know. Let me know which project is your favorite. I just love hearing from you guys in the comments down below. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving me purpose and giving me a place to just let loose and let my creativity ride out into the sunset. I don't know what I'm talking about, you guys. So anyway... I love each and every one of you so much. Don't forget all the Chalk Couture products that I use will be in the link in the link tree in the description box below. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And with all that being said... I love you guys so, so much, and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.